regardless of what you think, this is the first time I've attempted to run it and I'm doing it live, so I'll either be humiliated here or I'll be happy. So I'm getting ready to hook the quarter inch tubing here. I've pinched off the line. And uh, put that on there if we can. I got that about in the middle of the stroke and I'm going to start releasing it. Let's see what happens. And ta-da! It runs. We got a little thumping there and I'm sure there's all kinds of adjustments that I got to make and I, I didn't really lubricate it. leaking all over the place, but that's on uh, 20 pounds. And it did run, uh, run the first time, so I'm reasonably happy. Matter of fact, I'm very happy. And the uh, compressor is running down. I turned it off so that it wouldn't make any noise. There was a bit of a banging or a bearing hammering uh, noise in that engine, so I took out the uh, little bearings here that were uh, needle bearings and you know I don't think that those are designed maybe for this application and uh, we're getting a hammering at the end of each stroke so I installed some uh, flange type oil light bearings and we'll see if that improves it. And then I also uh, made the new pattern and casting for this uh, crank and you can see it's considerably thicker than the other one. I don't know what I was thinking when I made it that thin. Also it's larger in diameter here so that there's plenty of room for a set screw or a pin. I think I'll probably pin it uh, when I put the 5 8 shaft in. The other one was so thin walled that the set screw stripped out. Now we're ready to machine this and I'm going to do it in the bridge port this time. I'm back on the bridge port and I'm going to uh, drill and ream the crank and notice that I've got it clamped on a piece of hardwood and the reason for that is uh, so that I can drill and ream clear through and not uh, <coughs> damage the table nor will I uh, uh, need to put the vise on which I dread doing. I left the gate, part of the gate on the casting uh, so I got a place to clamp it. That'll be taken off here presently. Now, the throw is uh, 1.312, it's 1 and 5 sixteenths, and that's the distance between the two holes. And I'm using the Accurite for that. It also allows me to go back and forth between the holes without changing the tooling. Especially the smaller sizes, but the, of course this is going to be reamed 5 eighths. The small hole will be reamed 1 half. And this is going to give us a stroke of two and five eighths inches, which is a little bit longer stroke than uh, what we had with the old one. And here we go. And there we go. That's the five eighths hole. And I've already reamed the uh, half inch hole or three-eighths hole rather. I said half inch before but it's three-eighths for that uh, pin. And you know one thing that's kind of annoying on a job like this, you got to drop the table so far down in order to uh, get these long reamers in there. Even though I used my stubby bits a minute ago so I didn't have to do that. In the end I was forced to drop it way down. And one thing I didn't mention before is that the other reason that I'm doing this on the milling machine is I want these two holes to be perfectly parallel to one another so there isn't any binding. And uh, this is probably the best way to do it. Remember there's more than one way to do almost any one of the operations. It's been at least a week, maybe a little more, since I made that last video of reaming this hole. But now I've got the, uh, the crank on there and uh, got the crank pin in 
and you'll see that we got a set screw here and the hub is now thick enough to accommodate that. Uh, several other changes that I've made or improvements or steps that I've taken is uh, I also reduced the diameter of this where my finger is touching a little bit and then I've pinned it with a roll pin so that that won't come loose. You'd be surprised how things can hammer themselves uh, into looseness. And then on the top side here, all of the uh, uh, plumbing is now indoors, if you will. And I drilled a series of holes as needed. And then I plugged them where I didn't need them. There's a plug and there's a plug. Those will be filed off uh, flush. There's a plug and one also on the top. So that's all done and uh, runs good, runs well. And a uh, uh, change I made here is I had a regular uh, uh, compression spring in there and that takes up quite a bit of room. So I took that out and I've got what we call a, oh, a wavy washer in here. And that gives me just the tension I need and doesn't take up much space. And I now, I'm now using two knobs so that I can get the tension that I want with the one knob and then I lock it uh, with the other knob because there is a marked tendency for the uh, nut or the knob or whatever you want to call this here to work its way loose or to back off. So we're done right here for a while and I'm going to start turning my attention to the base. I am now started the pattern for the base. This is Baltic birch and it's 8 inches by 10 inches and it's quarter inch thick and I've already uh, beveled this on the uh, table saw at about 8 degrees all the way around and I want about an 8 degree slant here. I think it says 9 here but I'm going to make it about 8 degrees. It's not really critical. It's just for appearance. And then uh, we're going to use this half inch stock here. And I've, I'm forced to use uh, wood that I found in an old drawer. To, I wanted some hardwood and I wanted it to be a half inch thick and I didn't want to use plywood so we got some nice 70 year old wood here and I've already jointed that at 8 degrees and now I got to reduce it to about inch and a quarter because this is going to be about an inch and a half high. So I'll see you in about three days. Three or four days have passed since the last little episode here. Uh, one thing I wanted to show you here is sometimes I buy this handy wood here. This is aspen that you buy at a home center. And uh, it would be handy for pattern making except that it's so, uh, and this was still in the shrink wrap, it's so cupped. That is to say it's not flat. I don't know how that's going to show up here. but. Uh, cupped considerably and that's why I'm resorting to this 70 year old wood and I have taken this on the jointer and the, first the table saw then the jointer and I jointed uh, the edges at 8 degrees and so that's going to uh, be glued on like this at 8 degrees just a continuation of the angle we already have here on the Baltic birch so I'm going to cut these all to the right length and uh, kind of fit them up and that's the next step that I'll show you. This Baltic birch is a nice material if you can get a hold of this probably at some kind of hobby shop but it's very stable and it has very thin plies, many plies, more than what you'd see in regular fir plywood and uh, it's just a, it's a nice wood to work with and it smells good too like the old Tinker Toys did because they were birch as well so you get double your pleasure with this.